In this video, we're going to focus on the array manipulation and database. And this is part seven of the ChartJS MySQL database series. So what are we going to do here? Arrays and knowing how to manipulate arrays and understanding how you can connect this database is basically a very powerful skill. And if you understand arrays, you can do almost everything now. What is very important here, if you haven't seen my array series related to ChartJS, please check that in the YouTube playlist. You can find it there. We cover over 20 videos about arrays. Absolutely essential to understand. All right. So what we're going to do here, because many people might say, all right, we have this data. And if we want to change this data, what we need to do is we need to use Ajax and connect that to the database consistently for every adjustment. The answer is no, it's not necessary, especially if you have a database like this, or sorry, if you have a bar chart like this. This is a very small, straightforward bar chart where you can just get a lot of data already. And this is very nice because now what happens, you only make one time a connection with your database and afterwards you can just adjust it because we have created the arrays and convert them into a JSON readable array. So we encoded it here and this gives you a big benefit. So let's start and explore. All right, so imagine this. I want to put a button here, and this button will do the following. When I click on the button, I want to show only five specific values or five values. Let's say the first five here, this up till the green package. So how are you going to do this? Well, arrays is going to give you the answer. So what we're going to do here is, first of all, I'm going to create a function, basically, or I'll make a button. And in that button, let's search where's the canvas. All right, here's our canvas. And just below the canvas, I create a new div, and this div is called the, the button div for class, and then we say here, uh, button box. And in the button box, we have two buttons, adding up two buttons here. All right, so we just leave the one blank first for now, or while we can add up here, we can just say here the following. So what we wanna do is on click, if we click on this, we will set the value on, or we will change it. Basically, show, let's say show five, or show data, and then here, that will be the function. It will show the data, but it will only show five values, which is set in here. Okay. Show limited data. And here, what we do is we just copy this, and we just convert this one, and then we say here, show, all data and if I'm not mistaken there are 10 data points here this is 5 5 all right that's 10 so we will sh click on this and it will show only five data points and then after we will click again on this and it will show again all the data that we have without even using any Ajax here because we're just using here the JavaScript functions with the memory here of what we have and this is very powerful all right so what I'm going to do here now is create a function this function will be named Oh, that should be a small letter, sorry. This function will be named the one that we just have created. Basically on here, on click, we trigger this function. So we need to now assign this function or create the function here in JavaScript. And then we say you show data and the parameter equals num, meaning that whatever we have here, this value will be calculated in the, in the formula. So once we have this, or in the function, sorry, so once we have this, what we're going to do is we're going to continue on and basically here we're going to say the following. Because now we need to slice our array. So we have these two arrays that are going to be very important. The revenue array, which determines the data points here. And we have the label axis, which will deter determine the label names just below the x-axis. And this is very important. In ChartJS, the axis or the label axis or the x-axis will determine how many data points is being shown here. So if there's more here, while well, we have not enough data points, it will be shown as blank. If it's more, basically, uh, if there are more data points than labels, then it will stop at the last label. So very important. So let's copy this one first. We're going to slice it. So we're going to give it a constant. And if you're wondering why slice, slice will duplicate the array without modifying the original array. However, check the ChartJS array series, absolutely highly recommended now to know this. All right, so we call, we're we going to give this a name. So we say here revenue, and then I'll just give it uh, sliced. Uh, that's not sliced, that's sliced, all right. 
and we say here again revenue dot slice array and here we say zero comma num meaning the number here so that means that we show the first uh, value up to the very last value here or whatever is indicated here so then when we have another one it's exactly the same but the only thing that's different here is not slice values or revenue but it's the label access so i'm going to grab the red label access remove revenue here and just say label access slice is label access dot slice same methodology same structure all right so once we do this maybe say here console.log and we say num you will see we get the value but nothing more if i save this here refresh we have this here open up our developer tab pay attention now if we click on this press on this number five press on this number ten all right so we have this and i realize it should not be even number ten here maybe it should be number nine well number ten is fine in this case that's all right based on the uh, structure how slice works there should be no problem because it will cut away the the tenth value on there which is correct the tenth value would be uh, or basically index number 10 that's it so if you want to understand that check check the slice array videos absolutely so what, we, what we're going to do now is we need to reassign this basically we need to change and update the data values in here so we say here how do we get here well we have to work with the arrays again so we say here the following we say my chart dot let me see here data dot data set so it's basically in here we go to the data and then we have here the data goes up here so if you figure out this structure i explained this please check my other videos if you cannot follow along you have to really follow, watch those videos but then it's the data sets here and then we go here to the uh let's double check here we have oh sorry not the data sets if we are on the revenue yes all right we're going to assign this one first so we go to my chart data data sets it is in here remember it's from data then we go in here data sets and then we have the data so the data sets and i just put this on zero indicating that this is the zero uh, the first index uh, uh, zero index of first elements let me say your data equal the revenue that is sliced and then we do exactly the same and then we say you're equal to access is sliced so here's a question is this correct if you and watch my videos you know the answer and the answer here of course no it's not correct because this will reassign the data so we need to have here the labels so we say here the labels copy that put it in here and then of course you can see here the labels goes before the data set here and you can see this is a slightly mess sorry about this not proper indentations so if we just put them all into place or into order you will or you are better to to understand how it's structured all right so now which you can see here the labels goes first this is label access so we say here data set we removed in here and labels so once we did that then we can say here my chart dot update show this save that semicolon here save this refresh nothing happens and i click on this there you are so what happens now is when i click on this is automatically it starts to chop off the or slice the data but remember basically it doesn't slice the the original values we could even reassign the original values here with the 10 this could be even different like here we have uh, two buttons but we could say here for example function reset let's say here function reset data and this should be normally on the other button as well and we can just say here update now all we do is we grab this we put this in here and all we get is the revenue again and we get here the label access so we move the slice and if we update this and i'm going to select this reset here put the reset in here remove this and let's say here another one I'll put in another one, but this one will be only showing seven data. Show seven data points. And this one will be show five data points. This will be just a reset. Reset. Save this. And now if we refresh our page, click on that. All right. Press on this. And then we say reset. 
we go back to original. Why? We did not adjust it. As I indicated, with slice, slice doesn't adjust it, it just duplicates it, which is very, very useful in this case. And so with this, you're creating a almost an artificial dynamic style. It's interactive. And it is dynamic basically, but it doesn't grab anything more from your database. So you don't overload your database if you would have a lot of data points because you could just store them. Basically, they're stored here somewhere and we can just use that data from there. This is very, very useful to speed up your arrays and your database and your uh, chart in Canvas. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.